evening my name is Claire and this is my travel channel Claire's Footsteps and I'm really really excited about today's video because we are driving around Dartmoor in a Land Rover Defender we are basically we've rented this Land Rover out for two days and we're driving it around Dartmoor and we're wild camping or it's like nearly wild camping at two um, different farms in Dartmoor. Basically these farms, like the farmers who own the land, they allow people to camp here. It does, there's a small fee, um, but it's a way to kind of have the wild camping experience without like camping on someone's land and not being allowed to. So it's a really cool concept, but we've also hired out this Land Rover Defender, um, which has a roof tent. So it's all, yeah, really, really cool concepts. And I'm really excited to A, see more of Dartmoor and B, have the kind of camping Land Rover experience. So we're at the first farm now, which is called Old Brook Farm. Um, it's a really, really lovely spot. We're the only people here. So we're just out in this massive field. Um, so yeah, it's really, really nice. You might be able to hear there is a brook behind me, which is what it takes the name from. And yeah, just chilling. We're gonna make some tacos. Um, I'm gonna do a Land Rover Defender tour now. All right, so this is a Land Rover Defender. I'll show you around. All right, so this is the driving area. So yeah, all your normal kind of manual driving equipment. Um, it's a little bit different, like the handbrake's in a different place and the clutch is a little bit like stiffer and the pedals are a little bit different, but it's not too dissimilar to sort of any other car. Um, so that's all the driving area. And then these are the extra seats so it can seat five people. Oh, hello there. <laughs> all right, this is the awning, which is currently fully set up. <laughs> then we've got firewood, a fire pit that we've been very kindly given and in here we've got a fridge and all the cooking supplies that we need and another drawer here with cooking supplies if i can open it this one oh yeah cool so all the cooking supplies we need here oh. and then this is quite nifty for cooking and then this is the ladder that goes up to the roof tent and then not actually properly been up here yet this is the roof tent and it is actually massive it sleeps five people and um, so we have plenty of space here and um, yeah no it's quite comfy though they, they include um, like foam mattresses which are pretty comfy and we've brought our own uh, duvet and pillows and stuff um, so hopefully we'll be nice and warm up here it feels quite insulated so even though it's not the warmest July weather that we've been having at the moment hopefully it'll be all right and that is pretty much it it's very compact but it's got everything we need for a couple of nights um, obviously the toilet situation is your wild camping so you just go in the bush um, but other than that we've got everything we need and yeah no it should be it should be a nice evening it's just nice to be out in nature and just be somewhere that's really quiet and it's like just just us here which is really nice um so yeah keep you updated on how it goes so i've just woken up from our first night's sleep in the roof tent it was pretty comfortable as far as tents go it had like a foam mattress and it was very warm actually i was expecting to be quite cold i even had a water bottle and everything and warmer track suit but i wasn't cold at all and oh, just woke up and reminds me of when I was uh, road tripping and camping on Australia. I was absolutely boiling um, because obviously as soon as the sun gets in, it just gets really, really hot and tense. So I had to get up and come outside. But yeah, it's so lovely where we are now. I'm just having a little walk around. So the place we're at is called Old Brook Farm um, and it's a small sort of farmhouse and a bit of land. They actually, the owners only moved in six weeks ago, so um, they haven't, they're not actually farming anything here at the moment, although they do have horses and we have some really friendly dogs come and say hello. Um, so yeah, no, it's just sort of a small um, farmland area in uh, South Dartmoor near Ashburton and Buckfast Lane. It's near Buckfast Abbey, which we're going to go to a bit later, which I will show you a bit later on in the video. Um, so we just got here last night and 
checked in so just sort of met the guy who owns the land and um, he brought us a fire pit I'm walking through some very gnarly wood right now in flip-flops one minute I'm just gonna go to the other side of the field <laughs> all right so last night after we checked in we um, yeah we just sort of set everything up um, it's very quick to set up obviously the first time you set things up it's gonna take a little while because sort of <laughs> there's a few things that you forget how to do but generally it's really quick to set up I'll film all of that and we set it up again later um, and then we just had some tacos and some wine so yeah no it was a nice little evening So we had a veggie fry up with baked beans and veggie sausages, more veggie sausages, mushrooms and tomatoes which was really delicious and then we went for a little swim although it was very very freezing and I pretty much only got sort of up to my ankles. <laughs> so we've just drove down the road from the farm we were staying at and we're now at Buckfast Abbey which is still a working abbey where monks still live so we're going to have a little walk around this now and see what there is to see. So this was a really interesting place because of the dissolution of the monasteries we don't really have many working abbeys um, in the UK but this one was built in Victorian times just over a hundred years ago and it's been a working abbey since so a few monks still live here um, and it's a completely self-funded abbey but one of the most interesting things about it is that they make Buckfast wine here, which is randomly a really, really popular drink in Scotland. So that's part of how they fund the Abbey. Then we drove a bit to get up to Widdicombe in the moor. Part of it was on this uh, nice dual carriageway, the Devon Expressway, and part of it was up these very hair-raising country roads, which are especially nerve-wracking in a Land Rover Defender. But then we were out on these moor roads um, pretty soon after, which were quite nice to drive around. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, we are now in Withycombe in the moor. Um, we just had a really nice lunch at Cafe on the Green. It's like in a really small village in Dartmoor, but it's this really nice lunch with like loads of veggie options. So we had that, and now we're going to go for a little hike on the like surrounding tours. Dartmoor is really famous for its tours. These are basically hills with rocks on top of them, and they were used in ancient times for various sort of ceremonial purposes. But nowadays they're really popular for hiking. So we hiked from Widdicombe in the moor to Wind Tour, which was about 45 minutes each way. Um, as the name suggests, it was quite windy on top. <laughs> then we made our way to the next campsite, which was Chalicombe Far, um, which is not too far from Widdicombe in the moor. And we set up everything and I took a little video of setting up the roof tent. Yeah, 90% of putting the tent up, <laughs> not, not the remaining 10% there. So we're at our spot for night two, just put the awning and the tent up and just going to relax with some Coke Zeros and some olives I think just before um, we start cooking and stuff. And that evening we just had a little walk around the farm and then we ate some pasta and then we went and watched the sunset just with a glass of wine so it was very chilled and I didn't take much video but here's some photos. <laughs> so this is the setup. We did bring a duvet because it's much warmer and cosier. There's a nice world map there, and then these are foam mattresses. It is pretty cosy up here, but it's definitely colder tonight. I'm wearing two jumpers, I've got a hot water bottle, and I'm about to put my thick socks on that I got in Norway. Um, I should warm up though, it did warm up quite a lot last night, and I ended up like taking my jumpers off and just wearing my t-shirt, so it should be alright, but we're a bit higher up on the moors tonight, so it's um, yeah going to be a little bit colder, but yeah, should be all good. <laughs> After putting all the stuff away and saying hi to this incredible dog, the next day we decided to go for a little walk to Grimm's Pound. Grimm's Pound is a late Bronze Age settlement dating back from around 1450 to 700 BC. It's really well preserved given how old it is and yeah it's really interesting there's quite a few like this on Dartmoor but this is probably the most famous and we enjoyed lots of the lovely Dartmoor countryside, moorland on the way. Pretty much 
that it so thank you so much for watching and um, please do give it a like if you've enjoyed it and hit the subscribe button for more videos about travel in southwest england and all around the world thank you so much see you next time bye <laughs>